By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have some competitive decks for you. I know some of you really enjoyed to see those competitive matchups. Well, then this is a video for you. This is played at the semifinals of the Camel Trophy, the biggest tournament in Arnhem. And Arnhem, you probably think, what? What's Arnhem? Arnhem is actually a city and they play old school magic there. And this is their tournament, the Camel Trophy. It's held once a year by Bjorn Bjorn. Shout out to you, man, for organizing this beautiful tournament. And in the semifinals, we are looking at Martin and Frank. Now, Martin's the player on the left. He's playing five color good stuff, basically, but he's put Atox in there. So I've called it five color Atox. And he's playing against Frank, his buddy Frank, actually. And he's playing a robots deck. Again, it's different than your traditional robots. I've called it robots control. Why? Because it's got some white in it and white is just a really good control color. Now, I, before I go to the deck tech section, I would just like to point out that as always, you can also skip that section and it's really simple. Just check the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of them reads MTG games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. Also, if you want to know more about the Camel Trophy, check the description. If you want to know more about the rule set, it's Swedish with a lot of reprints. Uh, but if you want to know all the ins and outs about that, Again, check the description. I will put all the information in there for you to take a look at if you want to. Now here we are going to continue with the deck text. I'm going to start with the deck of Martin, five color Atok. And here we see the deck of Martin, five color good stuff. And the reason I've called it five color Atok is because look at the left top corner, you see three Atoks. And one of the things I noticed about those Atoks and the Suchis next to it actually, I think they're the only cards that are not altered in this deck. I mean, look at how beautiful this deck is. Check out that Blue Hurricane. I mean, phenomenal. The collection of Martin, it's absolutely bonkers. Um, but when we look at what this deck wants to do, right, I basically see five colors. I see all the power. I see most of the restricted cards. This is a very strong deck. And the interesting thing here is that, you know, with all those strong cards, Martin has chosen to go for Atok, and that kind of shows... What a strong, flexible, and diverse creature Atok is, right? And he's got a lot of artifacts to actually feed to the Atok here. There's also another card that I'd like to point out, and that is Inferno. Now, Inferno is a card from the dark, deals six damage to everything. It's an instant, but it's kind of costly, right? You got to pay lots of mana to cast this baby. But there's a really cool thing happening, and I've seen Martin do this quite successfully in a few matches now. And maybe, Martin, you're not happy that I'm sharing this with the audience, but people will forget about this. People, So if you hear this, don't tell. It'll be our you know little secret. Um, the cool thing about Inferno is it's an instant. So when he attacks with his Suchi and you know somebody, I don't know, disenchants the Suchi or there's a good block or you know whatever, the Suchi dies during combat, you get four generic mana, right? What can you do with those mana? You cannot cast a creature, you cannot cast a sorcery because you're in your combat, right? Well, when you've got Inferno, Martin can actually use it to cast a really cheap Inferno and wipe the entire board. And the cool thing is nobody expects an Inferno. It's this really cool one of that can actually change a whole game. I've seen Martin do it. So I'm really excited about that. Talking about like cards that can do that. I'm also a big fan of Hercules Recall. Strangely enough, I haven't really succeeded in using Hercules Recall like the way I want to. I've seen players doing crazy stuff with that card. Uh, Hercules Recall, a card originally from Antiquities. I think this is the Antiquities version. Beautiful altar, as you can see. Uh, one blue and one to cast, and it returns all the artifacts of target player to their hand. And, and I think this is so interesting. It says target player. So you can play it on yourself to save your artifacts, or you can play it on your opponent to kind of let him discard or to get him rid of, I don't know, a vice that's going to kill you. Or it's just this very unexpected card that can come out of nowhere and can really change the board state. So those are two cards that I'm really a big fan of. I guess in general, I'm just a big fan of instants and interrupts because it just, it makes the game so flexible. They can come boom, 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 you know, out of nowhere. Anyway, this is the beautiful, stunning deck of Martin. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this brew. And now we're going to go to the deck of his opponent, Frank. Let's take a look at his robots in control. And here we see the deck of Frank. Now, as you can see, this is a robots deck, right? So Robots, I'm not a big um, specialist when it comes to robots. I've played against it a lot of times, but I've never played it myself. So if I make a few mistakes in my assessment, you know, feel free to correct me in the comment section and, uh, you know, please be gentle. 
Uh, but anyway, robots, robots, what it in wants to do the core of robots, at least in my opinion, is blue, black, and of course the artifact creatures, right? We see four Triskelion, two Tetravuses, um, and we see four Suchis. So what you want to do as a robot player is try to get those artifact creatures out quickly, play your copy artifacts, copy them, especially the Triskelion. It's just, Trike is just an insane good creature, right? Six to cast for a 1-1 one, one with three plus one plus one counters. So it's a 4-4 four, four, and you can take those counters off to deal one damage to any target. And then a copy artifact, just one blue and one, and you can copy that trike. You've got two trikes, you've got two 4-4 four, four bodies, you've got six points of direct damage on the board. And the great thing is, if it dies, it can actually kill itself as well, right? Because it can take a counter off, kill itself with that counter. Uh, the cool thing is you're going to use an animate dead, get the trike back, and you can just get all this... Like, I've played against robots where I was on 17 life, and I felt really confident, and all of a sudden there were copy artifacts, animate deads, there were a lot of arms coming my way and I was dead. <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, I thought we just started the game and I remember mana vaults and stuff. That's actually interesting with this deck because as you can see, there are no mana vaults. So I think what, what Frank's doing with this game, uh, with his game plan is, you know, he wants to copy those Triskelions, right? He wants to get the value from them. He also wants to maybe copy the Tetravuses, you know, depending on the situation. You've got to adapt to whatever cards you draw, right? Uh, but then... He's not playing with Mana Vault, so he's not planning to really make a tempo swing with that. He is playing with all the Moxen, which, which can kind of, you know, give you speed in your game. He is playing with one Felwer Stone, which is interesting. He's playing with the Black Lotus, which can really help him. He is playing with Mishra's Workshop. So, you know, he's got the tools to play tempo, uh, but he's chosen not to go all in on tempo. I guess he's chosen to go a little bit more for the control package, right? He's playing with three Ice Manipulator. And he's playing with an abyss. So I find it quite interesting. And then on top of that, he's chosen to add um, white right here in the mix. So he's chosen to go with, you know, four disenchant. Of course, the almighty powerful balance. Like balance is, when you're behind, balance is the best card. And he's also chosen to play with one, I find this very interesting, one Armageddon. And Armageddon, Armageddon, I keep seeing more and more Armageddons. It is such a powerful card. As soon as you're ahead, bam! Cast that Armageddon, lock the game, you know? I mean, it's it's just really powerful, especially in combination with the Disenchant. You can use your Disenchant to take care of the jewelry of your opponent, you know? Destroy those mocks and so that he doesn't have any artifact mana, and then use your Armageddon to wipe out the lands. He cannot do anything. You've got some big creatures on the board. You swing in, he cannot cast anything, you win the game. Sometimes magic is really simple, and, you know, I've seen really strong Armageddon decks. I'm talking about Yuri Shark, you know, I mean, crazy. Uh, Armageddon robot build that, that that you had, you know, that you won a tournament with, I believe. But um, a Robogeddon, that's how you called it, Robogeddon. And, um, you know, this is not like that, but that one Armageddon in Frank's, you know, main 60 gives me flashbacks. Um, anyway, we, of course, also see the blue power. Um, it's just crazy strong, right? And, of course, we see the brain geyser and the mana drain. Mana drain, by the way, being the only counter spell in this deck. And I also, I'm also interested uh, by the fact that he's not playing with any swords to plowshare. So he's really chosen to, you know, go for that icy tap down strategy perhaps and then, you know, cast an abyss and slowly let his opponent kind of feed the creatures to the abyss instead of, you know, sorting the creatures of the opponent. And remember, the downside of swords is you're giving your opponent life. So it, it's a super good card, don't get me wrong, and it even removes the creature from the game. But there's one little downside that could have a huge impact on the game, and that is you're giving your opponent life, life equals time, so basically you're giving him turns. That's basically what you're doing. So if you look at the swords in that perspective and you have better alternatives, for example, playing the control game, then casting an abyss, you know, let him slowly feed his creatures to that, or, or killing his smaller creatures with your trike in this case, you know, there are alternatives to the swords. And it's always nice to see somebody playing white and not playing swords. Mentioned, saying that, by the way, <laughs> I have to uh, immediately correct myself because in the sideboard, look at the sideboard, we've got four sorts to plowshares in there. So in case, uh, I guess in case, for example, uh, Frank is running into a black deck or a really creature-heavy deck, he's just boarding all those swords in, you know. He, he, he can do that and he, he's reached the semifinals. So I'm sure he's, he's thought about this deck a lot. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of this iteration of robots and uh, is, is it an idea? Because in in my knowledge, uh, robots is usually with red and not with white. Um, things change, of course, but now we see black, blue, and white. And usually I think it was, 
you know, uh, black, blue, and red. Maybe even you should say blue is the first color because of the copies. Anyway, that's just that's just me. Like I said, I'm not a specialist when it comes to the robots deck. I've never played it, played against it <laughs> plenty of times. Uh, but feel free to correct me in the comments down below. Okay, so this is the deck of Frank. We've looked at the deck of Martin. Now let's go. Let's rumble. Let's go to the semifinal match of the Camel Trophy 2021. Game number one. Here we go of the semifinals in Arnhem. Oh, look at that opening of Frank. Library of Alexandria. So the uh, robots player there is on the blue playmat. Five color good stuff here. Look at the opening. So there's a soul ring into a chaos orb. So the chaos orb is probably going to flip on the library of Alexandria. I wonder now if maybe Frank can find one of his four disenchants. Looks like he, he cannot. He's just passing turn here. There is a Mishra's factory. Not kind of clear what that land is, by the way, of Martin. He's activating chaos orb. So that means he's got one floating. Let's see if he can succeed the flip here. And yeah, yeah, I've never seen Martin miss a flip uh, at a tournament, to be honest. He's got one left. He could put it in the factory, not doing so, of course, thinking about a possible sort on the side of Frank, even though Frank doesn't play it. There's a Mox Ruby and a land from Frank. Diamond Valley, Disenchant and Step on the Soul Ring, making sure that uh, Martin cannot ramp into anything big. No land drop by Frank, just a pass turn, just a land here as well. From Martin, there is a Suchi on the board, kind of expecting. Ooh, interesting. Hercules recall, very aggressively played, by the way. And there's a Wheel of Fortune. Okay, this explains the Hercules recall. I love it. I talked in the introduction about the Hercules recall, and here you can see one of the reasons why it's such a cool and versatile card. So uh, finding seven new cards with the wheel didn't have a land drop yet, I believe. So he can play a land, I think. And of course, he can, you know, maybe cast a couple of Moxen. He's got all the five color Moxen in here. There's one of them, a Mox Sapphire. Also played a land. They're kind of hard for me to identify. I believe it's one of the dual lands. And there's a Mishra's Workshop, Mox Jet. I'm expecting a robo robot here, perhaps a Triskelion for six. Are we going to see a Trike? Or are we going to see a Trike? Playing with four of these could also be a Tetravus. And there's the Tetravus. So this is a 1-1 one, one flyer with three plus one plus one counters during the upkeep. Frank can take any amount of counters off and make little Tetra Vites, little 1-1 one, one flyers. We also see here the um, strip mine being used on the Diamond Valley. There we see a beautiful Arabian Nights Island. Look at all those cool altars. Tapping six here. What's he going to do? Oh, Brain Geyser. Brain Geyser for four. So much value. So much value. Also liking the sleeves of Martin, by the way. Really cool. Now I want to buy these sleeves. Dang it. Okay, he's... Oh, he's discarding Inferno. Oh, man, that's too bad. I was really looking forward to a possible Inferno play from um, from Martin here. So there's the 4-4. He's animating his Mishra's factory. So there's a 2-2 copying the factory and then attacking. Not attacking with his 2-2. That's kind of interesting. Oh, he wants to use it for mana. Now I see. Using it for mana here. To my knowledge, by the way, I always thought that when you copy the Mishra's Factory, it comes in as a land, which may sound stupid, but I think that's kind of the rule. So I think he could have tapped the Copy Artifact for land here, but I might be wrong. So let's take a look. What can Martin do? He's now staring at two 4-4 four, four creatures. Can he find an answer? There is another Mishra's Factory tapping five. Hurricane for four. Wow. So that means four damage to both players. So they're going to drop Martin dropping to 12 here. So that is interesting. And now if he's going to attack with the Suchi, it might not be the best attack because Martin can basically trade it for one Mishra's Factory, although he's kind of tapped out here. So he could attack. I think there's a window here. Looks like he wants to animate one of his factories as well. Okay, so there's a window and he is taking it, attacking with both a Mishra's Factory and a Suchi, making it a 3-3. They're trading their factories here, and that means Martin is going to take... Um, okay, it looks like he's changing his mind. No, he's not. Okay, so he's taking... Oh, he's blocking the Suchi instead. Interesting. Interesting choice here. There we see a trike, by the way. Bad news for Martin. This is going to be really tough for him. He needs some kind of board wipe to get rid of these robots. What can he do here? He's already on nine, three more damage from the trike. So basically he's on six, right? So with one successful swing here from Frank, it could all be over. 
in the first game balance okay <laughs> and again that kind of explains that chum block mode is of the factory to turn earlier uh frank's turn i should say so wow what a good balance very good timing by martin here he is on six though because he got three damage by that trike before it left the battlefield so it's still pretty shaky and he still has Ooh, he can now tap down the factory and then he can start attacking with his two missions factories he's animating the factories he's attacking there's one strip, then he's gonna animate the factory. I'm expecting Frank to tap it down here. Exactly, that's what he does. He's taking two, gonna go down to four. Wow, there's a lot happening, but Martin is trying to stay alive here, trying to fight his way back into this match. And that IC is not helping. This Suchi is helping, and then Atok. This is quite interesting. And look at Frank's board. Only that one Mishra's factory, that lone cowboy here. It's kind of tough for Frank. Only two cards in hand. I mean, he's close, but he's not there yet. And I think he just has to pass turn here. I wonder what's in his hand. Tapping two. Playing a time walk. Okay, yeah. It's not bad, but it's not great. You would have wished that he, you know, could have used that time walk, you know, sooner in the game. That could have given him maybe the victory even. But he probably didn't have it at the time. So before he takes his extra turn, he's first going to tap something down. Makes absolute sense. Probably going to tap down the Suchi here or not. I was thinking the Suchi. Anyway, he's going to untap now again. Because what can he do here? I mean, he could decide to tap down another creature. Okay, there we see Chaos Orb. So if he's really aggressive, he could decide to maybe flip on the Suchi, tap down the factory or flip on the factory. He's going to flip on the Suchi. That's a solid hit. Suchi's gone. And he's going to animate. Then he's going to tap with the Icy. There's the Abyss. He's going to pass. Interesting. That means Atox has gone as well. And this is looking really good for Frankie. And remember, he's got the Icy to tap down the factory. He still has one factory. That's that copy artifact. Okay, there's another Suchi. He still has one mana untapped. There is a time walk here from Martin. His hand is empty. Frank's hand is empty. Wow, this is such an interesting first game. I... You know, Martin is so hard to kill, and you can see right here why that is. I mean, he's down on four, but he's not letting go without a fight. There we see an IC activation. I'm expecting him now to kind of tap down the factory, swinging in with two damage, kind of playing the aggressor uh, in this game here. Or th doesn't he want to take the damage? He's still on 16. He can take a hit. It looks like he's tapping the factory here. Now he's going to animate his own factory, which is the copy artifact. And he's going to swing in for two here. That means Martin's going to go down to two life. So it looks like he's not changing that dice there, but he's actually on two. Trust me on this. So he's on two life. What can he do? That Tetravus, that's very unlucky for Martin here. And he's actually just going to swing in for six. Going to put him to ten. Or is Frank going to block? Is he worried? Remember, Martin's on two, so he kind of knows. Okay, so he's blocking the factory here. Factory is a goner. He's going to drop to 12. That's when it, what happens here. And okay, that's it. That's it. Martin's like, okay, man, this was my bluff. Didn't work out. This is it. So game one here won by Frank. So he's still on his way to the finals of the Camel Trophy 2021. And now both of these players are going to do their uh, sideboarding business. And we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two is about to start here. So the winner is going to advance to the final semifinals here of the Camel Trophy 2021. A Swedish old school format uh, tournament, I should say, with a uh, wide reprint format how do you say that like you could play whatever reprints you wanted as long as it was same art and uh, again it's kind of hard for me to see what dual land this is but quite a slow start by martin here quicker start by frank with that felwer stone and that mox jet here there we see a plateau i think that's actually a volcanic island into an atok here for martin and uh four mana does that mean a turn to suchi here from frank that could be a possibility also an ic could be a possibility he's playing with three of those so let's see. It looks like he's got some options. I do believe. Do we see? Oh, cool. A time twister. Really nice. And of course, that's uh, that's pretty good for Frank. You know, I mean, he's had one permanent. It's not too bad. 
you know, it's not the best time twister ever, but it's a good time twister. And of course, we don't know what else Frank had in his hand. Probably wasn't that good. If, for example, he would have had a Suchi, then he probably would have chosen to play that Suchi first instead of uh, casting that time twister. So um, there we see a blue elemental blast, of course, coming from the sideboard of Frank, taking care of that Atok. Does that also mean that uh, perhaps Martin has boarded in some red elemental blasts? There we see a Mishra's Factory, Mox Ruby, Past turn, all the Moxen, by the way, in the deck of Martin or Altered um, by Dan Frazier. And there we see uh, an Icy Manipulator. And I'm kind of expecting Frank to tap down one of the lands now in the upkeep. He's actually not doing that interesting choice. I think I would have done it, to be honest. Ooh, I love this Shatterstorm coming in from the sideboard. Oh, it's a card you don't see that often. It's an Antiquities. Two red and two, and it destroys all the artifacts in play. The, the reason it doesn't see that much play, I believe, is because it's double red, but mainly because it's a sorcery, so it's sorcery speed. And there we see a balance. Wow, there's so much happening right now in this game. It's insane. So that balance, kind of like a soft mind twist, right? Um, really, really good. And now we see an attack with the Mishra's Factory. He's probably going to pump it here, dealing three damage as well. And this is pretty gutsy, actually, from Martin, right? Because you're playing against a player with white. So, I mean, there's there's always a chance. There we see a flip on one of the factories here by Frank. There's always a chance that you run into a Swords or a Disenchant. Nonetheless, Martin decided to go aggro. And he's going to continue with the aggro strategy. And we see Frank now dropping to 15. There is a Loa. And that's land number 6. That means he's able to cast a beautiful Trike there. And there is an Atok and a pass turn here. So I wonder what Frank's going to do. Ancestral Recall. Good call from Martin playing his Red Elemental Blast to stop that Ancestral Recall. And uh, he is killing the Atok and then attacking for two. That means that uh, Martin's going to drop to 18 here past turn. It does mean there's a little opening for Martin here. If he's gutsy enough to attack with the factory again. Here we see Mox Sapphire. Are we going to see a Suchi? An Earthquake for two. That's so interesting. Wow. An Earthquake to take care of that trike. Unfortunately, um, Martin's unlucky here because Frank is top decking another Triskelion. So there's another 4-4. Four, four, and that's a problem actually for Martin here. So next turn, Frank can start swinging in with the 4-4. Four, four. And no creatures played here by Martin. I guess I guess Martin's his deck is kind of light on creatures, which is part of his strategy. Of course, Mishra's Factories are also creatures. Uh, attacking here again with the 4-4. So he's going to drop to 11. Are we now going to see a Suchi? No! Oh, a Dust to Dust! Man, that is pretty brutal. So Dust to Dust, a card from the dark. Two white and one to cast to remove two artifacts from the game. And uh, at least this is good timing here by Martin now playing that Chaos Orb after the Dust to Dust. And in response to the activation, uh, Frank's actually going to use the Triskelion. So this is how Chaos Orb works, right? You cast it for two. For one, you activate it. And then you don't have to say what you're going to target. So in response to the activation, Frank thinks, okay, I need to take my counters off. If I don't, he's going to kill my trike. And then I cannot deal any damage. Another trike here by Frank. Wow. And then, of course, Martin responds by that by taking care. Wow, what a game. I can't even explain what's happening. There's a time twister. Insane. I love this game. Anyway, um... I was trying to explain, whatever, you know, if you want to watch it, you just got to rewind that. This is just crazy action. Time Twister. And this is really kind of a last resort for Martin. He's kind of really looking for an answer here. He's one game down. He's on seven. His opponent keeps playing trikes like there's no tomorrow. He's, he's, he's got to find an answer here. The problem, of course, is he's only got one untapped land. Not quite sure if he's already played a land. I kind of missed that. I was just trying to explain what, what was happening in this absolute crazy, crazy game. Let's see what Martin can do here. Going through his hand here at the semifinals of the Camel Trophy. I mean, it's looking bad for Martin. And yeah, that's it. Okay, he cannot play out the balance. He cannot do it. Oh, that's so unfortunate, that balance. It could have at least given him a couple more turns. Wow, wow, wow. And I have to say, Martin and Frank, beautiful, beautiful decks. A beautiful, beautiful game. And I'm really looking forward to the finals of this tournament that you can actually see on this channel as well. Um, 
the next update, it will just be the finals. Okay, I'm just going to show you the finals for next uh, for the next update. So keep an eye on the channel. Uh, if you want to help the channel out, by the way, if you enjoy what I'm doing and the videos I'm making, uh, you can help by doing three things that are completely, completely free. The first thing is you can subscribe if you're new here to the channel. Welcome to Timmy Talks and it's great that you've found my channel. Uh, the second thing that you can do is leave a like and leave a comment. So that's actually the third thing you can do. So the second thing, leave a like, hit that like button. It really, really helps. And the third thing that you can do is leave a comment in the comment section down below. All that really helps. And then there's one last thing that you can do, and that is you can become a sponsor of the show by becoming a patron. And how can you become a patron? It's quite simple. There's an info card popping up right now. Click on that info card and that will take you straight to the Timmy Talks Patreon page where you can check out how you can help and support the channel. And you know what? If you support the channel, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. How cool is that? Talking about that scroll, let's take a look at the amazing, the wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Let's go to the end scroll. Ich kann das Finger zu Samba gesehen.